memory, of course, of uh, Itai Tamara. Uh, I think uh, Itai, um, I think, means a lot to, to, to many of us, uh, and very much to those sitting uh, on stage today for, for different reasons. Uh, I think for me, Itai was really a, an inspiration as a journalist and, and an activist. Uh, I, I see myself as a journalist as an, and an activist, just not as good as Itai. Um, uh, I think he inspired uh, the youth movement as it is today. He inspired many activists. He inspired Occupy Africa Unity Square. Uh, he inspired, I believe, and I'm sure maybe Pastor E will talk on that more, but I, I feel he also inspired the hashtag movements um, that came uh, in 2016. We're going to keep this very interactive and conversational. Uh, no one's going to be presenting position papers or PowerPoints. Uh, we want to keep it interactive and free. Uh, we don't necessarily have a free country, but this is a free theater. Uh, so the comrades, please feel free to, um, uh, to, to, to share what you really think. Uh, I want to ask the first, the first question. Um, uh, and the first question is, uh, what do you think is the legacy of Itai Zamara? Uh, and I'm going to uh, uh, first ask our comrades to quickly introduce themselves and then we get into the first question. Just your name and the struggle you are in, or, you know, your address, if you want to give it away, obey, if you want to give the, the, the comrades in suits your address, you are welcome. So, just quickly, who you are, and then we'll start the conversation. Um, evening, everyone. My name is Tavile Dewa. I'm the Director for Women's Academy for Leadership and Political Excellence. Revolutionary Critics Comrades. My name is Terry Rai of the Historian, the youth chairperson for MDC. Thank you. Evening, uh, my name is Doug Coltart. I'm a human rights lawyer. Matt. The one on the Good evening, everybody. My name is Ivan Mawarire. I am a local pastor for a church here in Harare, uh, but also am a social justice um, activist and really just a citizen activist who, who is just interested in making sure that our country goes the way it's supposed to go. Thank you for being here. Mani Rwaka Naka Kunimese Ma Tikuta Zwara Nasi Rekuranga Raita Izamara Sitara Mundi Ritwa Linda Tsungi Raika Ingiza Ndaka Mira Zwara Nasi Ndaka Mira Se a human rights activist and a development activist. I'm passionate about fighting Kuti Shisharwa Shekunomu Zimbabwe Shikone Kuno Sununguka Zhiyene Ma Social Economic Rights Zhikone Kuno Zimiri Rira Kunika Yaka Sununguka Yisina Ku Chinyiri Rwa Neu Napwa Neku Unyi Ritsi Rwa Kumbiro Remtemu I think if you ever leave activism community you should become a news reader I think ZBC needs you So uh, whenever there's markets, you can you can read the news. Uh, the news at 10:30 p.m. So, so firstly, I want to ask the question. Uh, I think, as I said uh, earlier, what do you think is the legacy of uh, Itai Tamara, uh, Linda? Because we're uh, you know, totally unbearable. But he showed us the courage that anyone can be challenged, regardless of who they are. You know how Mugabe was feared in the bubble. He was like. There were some of these supernatural things that you cannot think of, that you cannot challenge. But Itai Zamara showed us that it can be done. He ignited the spirit in us, which led to the rise of the social movements, that this flag, Tachamuka, when we occupied Africa, Unity Square, and all that. It was because of the show of courage that Itai Zamara did to go into Africa, Unity Square, and say, Mugabe Shafai. And we managed to carry on that battle, we managed to fight, we managed to resist the oppression, the dictatorship, the brutality and everything else. We managed to do it because Itai Zamara had the courage to stand out and say, I will open up this way and make every other Zimbabwean stand out and speak out. So that is the legacy that we remember him for. And we should not forget the sacrifices that he made. Because up to the day we are here, we don't know where he is. 
We are still struggling. We are still fighting for our social economic rights. We are still fighting for a better Zimbabwe where every individual is free to express who they are. We are still fighting for our personal security as enshrined in section 52 of the constitution of Zimbabwe. We have to be realistic about some of these things. Our constitution is willingly violated almost on a daily basis. But are we doing enough as activists in Zimbabwe? Are we doing enough as political leaders to ensure that we free ourselves from bondage? We free ourselves from unconstitutionalism? Our lawyers, the dark cultures, are doing enough to ensure that constitutionalism becomes the order of the day, the rule of law. Section 3 of the Constitution speaks of the founding values and principles of the Constitution, which speaks to the supremacy of the Constitution, which also speaks to, to, to adherence and protection of human rights. But we continue to see violation of human rights. Are we doing enough as activists? Why have we slackened? And why are we just looking at the government, the states, and the judiciary continuing to violate our constitutional rights in Zimbabwe? Thank you. Thank you, comrade. Um, so I, I think you bring up a, you know, a, a, a really valid point about the, you know, the legacy of, uh, of the Thai. That inspiration that it gave us, I, rem I remember you know, during the time of the hashtag movements, how actually Africa Unity Square became that mobilizing space where comrades were, were, were meeting up. Uh, Pastor E, what do you think, uh, in, in your opinion, is the legacy of, uh, of Itai, uh, especially in relation to the hashtag movements, to hashtag this flag. I think the word legacy by, by definition is, you know, speaks about something that is left for people to, to enjoy or to use or to own. In, in Shona, we call it Naka. Naka chinu chino sir wavan. Kuti chive chunu chakava koshe la chava no chenge ta chino abati la didiga. So itai na kaya kati si that the legacy that itai left for us, especially for those of us vagazo changa muka, itai ato torwa. We then woke up where itai had already been taken and itai had uh, uh, had had already been had already been abducted. The legacy that we then found out, or that we then found out he had created and left for us, is this extremely valuable legacy of the ordinary person speaking truth to power. Now, kaya taka sir wana itai, yataka this is kwenye mkoma na ye, nde kuti hizo, anina nizaki, chero, Uri 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 muna nema business kana uti uri venda kanda kana kuti uri uri muno kana uri chizaru wache muni kamono. If you are a citizen of this country, itai by his actions taught us that you have a right to speak truth to power. You have a right to hold those in government or those in leadership to account. Many of us didn't know of uh, chapter 4 of our constitution, which speaks of, it gives us the Bill of Rights, the freedom of expression, the freedom of association, the right to challenge or to support government policy. And I think for me, this is the, the most important thing whenever we speak about the Tides Amara. Wherever we go, whether we are on uh, television uh, uh, stations in terms of news stations or in newspapers, whatever it is, and we're trying to we're trying to to contextualize what we are doing. We speak of it. That's the legacy. And let me say this is something that Zorera Before I give back to the chairman, Mumuri in a family. A family that is given a legacy or that has been given an inheritance. If they don't make use of that inheritance or they don't value that inheritance, they lose it. But the important point is this, is that not only do you lose the legacy, but you also insult the one that left the legacy for you. Akusu kwa sikiru wane naka chete. Asimurenge mato tuka kana kuseka uyo. Akaita sei, akakusira inakayachu. 
This young man paid with his life to leave me a legacy, to leave me an opportunity. Today, many of us are able to tell the story of Zimbabwe because it ties to that first. And that is the powerful legacy that this young man's life represents. Very powerful, powerful words. Also, thank you for calling me chairman. Yeah, I thought I was just a moderator here. I was trying to chairman. All right. So, Stabile, uh, from your perspective, um, do you think that Itai has, uh, you know, through, through his work, through his activism, has he also uh, inspired young women to, to be part of the struggle for a better Zimbabwe? Uh, sure. For me, Itai Zamara is a symbol of uh, real patriotism. He's a symbol of uh, resiliency. He's a symbol of self uh, uh, in, we are in the midst, we are surrounded by activists who just think of themselves activists who fight for personal gain. But when I look at Itai, when I look at his history, I see someone who puts the nation first ahead of his own personal interest. There are so many reasons that we give on a daily uh, basis not to take action, not to improve our livelihoods. Things like, I'm married, I cannot leave my partner, but Isai Zamara was married. There are things that we give uh, excuses as, I have kids, but Itai had two kids. Uh, uh, we have relatives, I can't leave my relatives and friends, but Itai had so many relatives and so many uh, friends. I cannot leave my political party. Itai also had a political party of his choice but he chose to put, and even his profession, sometimes we think of our professions and say, no, there's no way that I can risk my life for the betterment of everybody else without putting my interest first. But Itai sacrificed all of that, including his journalism profession. Right now, instead of celebrating his birthday, we are here, some of us, we are mourning, and at the same time, celebrating a life well lived. Uh, just. Uh, last month I was in prison. I've never been so scared in my life. It was like the first time uh, getting arrested in a period of 12 years of activism. I started thinking about Itai, how strong and resilient he was. Because when the time came for him to be abducted, it was not the first time that he was involved with skirmishes with the state security apparatus, but he was unwavering. He was so determined to make sure that Zimbabwe is a better place for all of us, that there's respect for fundamental human rights. So for me, he's that symbol of what we all need to what need to do to put the nation first ahead of uh, our personal interests. And as we move forward, let's remember Itai, whenever we are about to make decisions that uh, concern uh, Zimbabwe at large, and just look at the image that uh, Itai uh, portrayed. And I'm so glad that at least we have someone to look up to. Uh, as, a, as a woman, there are a lot of issues it, that inhibit us from actively participating, from, uh, participating in democratic processes. But if you look at the current challenges that are facing Zimbabwe, it is women who are suffering. First, if you, if you look at the current economic meltdown, unemployment, shortage of basic amenities, uh, poor service delivery, no electricity, poor governance, claim down on human rights defenders, it is the women who are suffering more. But if you look at those who have walked the path before us, it strengthens us to continue uh, going on and building more energy to fight dictatorship. Thank you, Stabile. Stabile. Um, it, 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 I mean, it makes me think, uh, Comrade Obey, uh, talking of, of, of activism, uh, we've seen this flyer going around, Kuti, there's a final push on 16th August, and we see a bus on, falling over a cliff. We're not sure how the bus got to the cliff, if there were, if there was such a fuel crisis, how the bus got to that cliff or in, in, all the way in Nyanga. Um, but it's a very interesting flyer. Uh, it doesn't give too many details. But are you thinking of, for this final push you're talking about, are you thinking of using the home ground of, uh, of Itai Zamara, Africa Unity Square? And what do you think is his legacy 
to the youth movement here in Zimbabwe. Thank you so much, uh, Comrade Father. You have talked about the past. I think I have to put some clarity before I proceed with the question. You know, you asked why, uh, the, how they managed to get uh, there with the bus. You know, it's a corrupt government, so they took all the fuel and uh, fueled their bus. Unfortunately, they also have a, a blind driver, this is why it's now in the cliff. But anyway, the leaders of Ida uh, I would say he left us three key things. Number one is sacrifice, courage, and the third one is clarity. You know what Itai Zamara started to do at that particular time? No one would believe that his message that he used to say would be a reality at some point. I remember a picture the first time, eh? he had a picture in Africa in the square where he was saying Mugabe must go. Everyone would then say Mugabe will not go because that was the belief at that particular time. But the message that he sent to the public, in as much as it was not a belief at that particular moment, it became a reality some few years later following. Okay, so you see that he's someone who was clear on what he wanted to achieve. Whether people were with him or were not with him at that particular time, what uh, was the driving force to him was the idea or the goal to achieve, which was to ensure that we have a new democratic uh, government. That struggle is a struggle that we are still pursuing even up today. Yes, at that particular time, the target was Mugabe. He went, which is fine. But also, what you are still fighting, which is a bit collective and broad, is to ensure that Zimbabwe becomes a democratic development state, where the fundamental human rights are also given a chance to be upheld. Look, we had a constitution at that particular time, which allows, and you still have that clause, section 59, it allows every person to demonstrate and petition. But you then realize, upon practicing that particular uh, uh, section, Claim, uh, claim down will then follow to, to one's life. It is the reason why we also, know, we also don't know where it is today. It's because of a government that is not considered to the constitutional provisions. But given those circumstances, he's one person who still sacrificed all his life. He knew this, uh, the consequences because I remember at some point when I was giving his convers a conversation with him. Because by the way, I worked with him closely with something that he called uh, National Youth Action Alliance. At that time, I was still the Secretary General for Zimbabwe National Students Union, so I became the chairperson of the NYAA. He was the spokesperson. So I also remember that the day when he was abducted, uh, early in the morning at called me to meet in town around 10, but unfortunately, 10 came by and the news was uh, something else. So we then realized that he's someone who knew the consequences of what he was doing, but he still sacrificed. And from time to time, he would say, what we are doing, we might not enjoy the results at that particular time. But generations to come might still then enjoy uh, the results. It is also the challenge that we are still confronted with today. What we are doing today as activists, as leaders in our various circles, in be it in civil society, political parties, we might question ourselves on whether we are going to produce results tomorrow. Yes, the results might not come tomorrow, but at some point, the results will still come. When he said Mugabe must go, results did not come while he was still alive, but results still came later. So again, we say he achieved what he was fighting for, even if it was achieved in his absence. So that speaks of, uh, I mean, sacrifice. Yeah, but it also touches uh, on courage. You know, it's not an easy thing to confront a dictator, because you know the consequences are dire. But for him, he was one person who stood up and said, enough is enough. We're facing a lot of challenges, a lot of social ills were taking place at the hands of the then governing party led by Robert Mugabe. So he said, enough is enough. It's high time that we stand up and say the clear message that you must go. You know, it's not an easy thing to take a petition to Munumtaba, but he did that because he wanted to achieve a certain result. So when you talk of people who are selfless, we, can, we cannot uh, mention the word selfless without also citing the Taizama in that particular instance. So in short, the legal that was left was by one uh, brother of mine, Taizama, is a legal of sacrifice, is a legal of courage, and clarity on what one wants to achieve. Thank you. Now, uh, uh, when I first got the, uh, the, the list of, of panelists uh, from the organizers who shared them with me, I said, comrades, this is not a panel, this is a junta. Yeah. So, luckily we've got a lawyer on the junta to represent us in case Obey talks too much uh, about certain things. 
Um, now, Doug, as, uh, as we all know in Zimbabwe, we've got freedom of expression. We just don't have freedom after expression when these guys in suits will come to greet us afterwards. Um, and I think this, you know, with the Itai, I think something he's done is definitely inspired uh, young Zimbabweans to express themselves, take action. Uh, but uh, I think uh, definitely when they take action, uh, the state takes legal action against them. And I think this obviously keeps you very busy as a lawyer. What do you see as, 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 as uh, Itai's lasting legacy? Yeah, I think um, Itai's legacy really speaks to the, um, the role of the, of the citizen um, to, to stand up for what you believe in. I, I think Itai uh, was someone who, in many ways, he, 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 was, he was one of the first to not look to someone else, to, to a leader, to an organization, to, uh, to, to take them somewhere. But to say, what can I do as a citizen? I think that's something that each of us, even this evening, needs to, to think through, is what is my role going to be? Rather than, than, than looking uh, to others, yes, we have to look to each other and collectively um, strive together. But we have to ask ourselves, uh, what am I going to do? I think that's something that, that, uh, that Itai really um, personified. And, uh, you know, I was, I was speaking to, uh, to, to someone from, from Sudan recently about uh, what has been happening there. And they were saying about how when, uh, when, when, when someone is killed during the, the demonstrations, you know, they've had, been, had an ongoing revolution since, since uh, December last year. They've been, they've, they've been having um, protests and, and they've, they've recently had some victories. But, um, but they were saying that when, when someone is killed on a street, the people in that street gather on the street where the guy lived the artists come and they paint a portrait of, uh, of, of, of the person. Then they go to the government, uh, to, the, to the signposts uh, of, the, of the name of that street and they rename that street where that, that martyr lived after that street. Uh, after, after that, uh, they rename the street after the martyr. Now, Itai Zamara is a martyr of Zimbabwe. He's a martyr of the freedom, of, uh, of the struggle for freedom in Zimbabwe. There are many, there are many other martyrs, of course, um, but he is certainly one. And I think that we need to start thinking about how do we capture that legacy? How do we commemorate uh, our martyrs? And I think this Itai Zamara Trust is a, is a really fantastic, uh, fantastic way of, of doing that. Um, but let's keep thinking, let's keep thinking about how do we uh, continue to celebrate the legacy, not just of Itai Zamara, but of the many martyrs uh, who have died uh, fighting for, for a free Zimbabwe. Thanks, Doug. So I think, uh, I think with that, we have to wrap up this, uh, this uh, panel. We're being told that time is up. I think that's also what happens when you have a junta of comrades here. They each get to say one thing and then uh, you get removed uh, by a soft coup. Um, so we'd like to thank this junta uh, for coming here, um, for showing, I think, also how much uh, Itai has inspired everyone, you know, from uh, the youthies like Obey, you know, the lawyers, the women, Cheroma comedians, we are inspired. Uh, and also, uh, hopefully, his legacy can live on in the many activists that are here today, in the many different citizens that are here, and uh, in the new Itai Zamara Trust. Thank you. I've been Comrade Fatso. These have been your juntas. Thank you.